Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, May 31st. This is the um, OSPO Plus Plus University Working Group meeting. Great to see or everybody here. June 1st in Japan. That's right. true. That is very true. We should put that in the minutes just because yeah. you're presenting that. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> what time is it there? Like 12 or it's, 1? It's 1 uh, 4 a.m. Nice. I admire your dedication. Because <laughs> I, I would not chaos. be that dedicated. Yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> I am. If 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 Matt wasn't so awesome and taking care of his son this week, I would not be here. <laughs> um, okay. If you have not added your name to the minutes and you would like to do so, that's totally fine. Um, we can certainly drop those minutes in the um, chat for you if anybody needs them as well. Um, I am also going to let, I know Claire, you're um, kind of leading this group as well. So um, I will not monopolize this conversation, but um, I did uh, take a quick recap. Um, and I think I have hopefully uh, interpreted things properly. Um, it seemed to me that there were three main kind of themes, overarching themes that came up from the uh, meeting last time. And the first one seemed to be to help OSPOs in universities to find themselves based on kind of this document that you all oops already had it open that you all had um uh created from uh chaoscon eu is that right yeah. yeah so it seemed like that that's what you're kind of wanting to help ospos really um figure these things out so maybe like in terms of a guide or something i'm not sure what that will look like in practice um but that was oh go ahead Sorry, Elizabeth, didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good. Um, so I, I should mention, um, I, I do appreciate your and Claire's efforts, um, particularly since in theory, Stephanie and I had agreed to <laughs> co-chair this working group. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll try to um, embrace that more. Um, so one thing I think we talked about last week and we've talked about earlier as well is this you know we are looking at university open source in the broadest sense of the word um so i don't think it's necessarily about ospos defining themselves um but, but it's it's more about you know uh, explore what open source is within universities um and uh what are metrics for success around that and you know certainly ospos play a role in that but there's a lot of people involved in open source outside of an OSPO within the university as well. And in fact, at that meeting in um, at ChaosCon, I, I think most of those people were not in OSPOs who came up with that list. So we, we just wanna be um, as expansive, I don't know if this sounds right, as expansive and inclusive <laughs> uh, as possible. Is, is this more a fair statement then, just generally Perfect. define what open source means to them? Perfect. Okay, Perfect. awesome. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And I, I am so sorry, Stephanie, I didn't mean to leave you out of the conversation either. Um, no, no, don't no. worry. It, I, I'm kind of with the you where like, yeah, we said we were going to do it. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I never got back to you. <laughs> no, I'm totally still right. fine with uh, working with it. Yeah. Yeah, take it uh, no, everyone, and I, I'm sure I speak for Stephanie. Yeah, not neither of us is looking to lead a charge here, right? <laughs> we, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I speak for Stephanie <laughs> on on that one. So, really, um, I think one of the things I'll follow up with her about is, for example, kind of trying to write up a charge for the group, um, you know, scope, so that we don't you know, have to keep revisiting these topics. So that's something I'll, I'll follow up with her about. Obviously we'll want input from everybody, but maybe by the next meeting, we can have some of that, um, in, you know, in my, at least in my case, working groups that I've co-chaired and committed to writing that kind of stuff up. So I'll try to have that, you know, Stephanie will try to have that for, for the group next time. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, Cause I think you all know more about the vision uh, for this group, then certainly that I do. So yeah, that would be amazing. That would be awesome. Um, so do you see, um, do you see the development of um, not necessarily the metrics themselves, but at least the general idea as part of that uh, vision? I see nodding from a few people. 
I mean, I think that was for me the one of the things we started talking about in this for that the, what this group was going to look at uh, particularly for and that was particular to university or academic based um, institutions. So yeah, that okay, that's great. And and then these were kind of the it seemed like the the topics that came up last time. Um, just as a starting point for us, obviously it's not all you know, encompassing. Um, I'm sure other things will come along, but this is definitely gives us a good place to start. Um, it's kind of a long list, actually. It's a lot of a lot of things, but um, but yeah. So I don't know, um, Said, if you want to prioritize any of this or just kind of leave it out. You know, here are the things that we want to talk about. I'm not sure how you want to handle that, but no, I, I think. Sorry, go ahead, Claire. No, I, I, it was just a suggestion. So, um, uh, so I'm I'm thinking back to the discussion that we had again in 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 Brussels and thinking about the very long list that was even longer than this of the various different ideas that everyone had had created under under the the topics. Um, uh, and I suppose I, I'm wondering if just um, as a, as a starting point, might it be useful to gather feedback from folks as to anything they know is currently being measured in their university? So to to maybe differentiate between examples where we know something is being measured, if it is, I don't know if anything's being measured anywhere, I'm sure it is, <laughs> um, but to, to, <laughs> to actually kind of capture those first, because I do think the conversation very quickly goes into and wouldn't we love to have, um, but but it might be more useful to, to, it might be useful, I suppose, to capture at mm. least what is currently being measured and why and how, um, because it may be the factor that it may be important, or it maybe it just happened to be the thing we could measure, I don't know, but, but maybe exploring that might help us um, as a starting point, because I know I know that the, the temptation is very quickly to go into we need the all of these metrics, <laughs> but it might it might it might be too much too soon to to it might help focus us. Should I pull or is this just going to be overwhelming if I pull this list that we uh, were created down here into the into our minutes just so they don't get buried or do we, are we good to leave them here? Because you're right, there was like extra. <laughs> I, maybe, I think maybe. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Just no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going. I was going to say maybe we could even just indicate of those which ones we know we've seen being measured. That was, that was just a suggestion. Yeah, I, I think I think this is a good document to to keep as um, sort of the canonical reference point. Um, so I my suggestion is that the calls don't necessarily have to replicate this document, but probably should point to it, right? So we just keep coming back to it. Um, and you know, my sense, and Claire, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you know what we observed at that workshop is the metrics that were in that document are not existing chaos uh, metrics, or or if they are, we don't see an obvious mapping. So that might be one thing to do as well is to see if there's a mapping between that list and the existing chaos. Um, a set of metrics, because obviously that would be a good place to try and, and, and start. And I definitely like Claire's idea of trying to figure out what is being measured already. Um, and, and, you know, what comes to mind for me, for example, is I know that some of the OSPOs in, in the US context, at least universities are trying to come up with an inventory of open source software that's being produced. That is not easy or trivial um, to do, but that is at least one starting point we might look at is how, how are institutions doing in that mapping. Uh, another is tech transfer groups are an obvious perhaps place in some institutions to go to because they're doing that work too in terms of trying to identify open source software um, and may have, have some, you know, they their measurements may be how many disclosures there are for open source software. I'm guessing yeah, no, it's pretty low. Yeah. And I think you're right. The tech, the tech transfer component is what universities care about. But yeah, absolutely. Partially because they have metrics. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but it, one thing we're we're trying to do uh, with UCs are, and I and we're talking to Georg about this getting like Petrogia or in chaos involved is trying to create a repository of um, uh, open source. Um, repository browser 
that we're using to try and develop uh, metrics for like all the UCs, but it's something that we could definitely see is if we can get this going, basically we're trying to get funding for the activity, um, that it could be a great way of getting that that baseline data. Because basically somebody did this at UCSD, one of our, sorry, UCSD, one of our um, colleagues at UCSD did this just kind of on his own, one of the guys from the library, and, um, and came up with like 30,000 you know, hit uh, repositories that had some connection to, and to UCSD. And it was, it was such a mind-blowing experience for the leadership when they saw those numbers. And of course it's not refined. I mean, it's, you know, there was no real, um, you know, no qualitative kind of analysis on those yet, but uh, he started doing that and it still started, getting, so it started to look really interesting. So I will definitely, um, we're hoping to create that as kind of a good, uh, I want to say like a, a template for some, especially for universities to follow, because it was a relative, you know, once you kind of create the system, I think it's a relatively good, at least to get that initial data. Uh, so in, in reference to the uh, existing chaos metrics, there are not that many existing chaos metrics that uh, map directly to uh, uh, academic open source. Uh, yeah, we had, we had just right. We had just kind of started that initiative or just started looking at that uh, prior to this group uh, starting and, and probably this, this group starting up is probably a, a direct result of that work. Uh, but I did drop a link to the the one academic open source uh, metric that we created uh, into the chat. And it's it's a, maybe a little bit more the beginnings of a model. It's called Academic Open Source Project Impact. And then yeah, this, uh, is, this is very helpful. And then in, in regards to the, uh, the what other universities are measuring, I was kind of I was trying to see I, I didn't see completely in that previous document, but the, the big one is funding, right? Like every every university is probably measuring funding around the open source projects. So after that, maybe it's downloads or citations, uh, but but funding is that one that probably everyone's looking at, right? I find like funding is yeah something, but sometimes it's hard to to find the like there's not necessarily a little like right something within there the the funding uh, documentation that says open source, so you have to like the search for that. So sometimes it's it's not it's not necessarily it's something we're working with our office of research on is to get that get something that makes it easier for us to track it um, and that they and that they're interested in tracking as well. So um, yeah, it is definitely something I think I feel like it's just it's not in the system. It's not in the like. It's it's not a norm yet to have that be something that they're they're specifically tracking in an easy way. You know what I mean? Like it's not like I said, if we could just have a little checkbox when you yeah. is it open source or not <laughs> like, or have it in the title somehow all the time or something along those lines. But yeah, definitely yeah. Funding, tracking the funding. Uh, also, along with the fundings, as we are uh, discussing on the mapping with the existing metrics, so I see many metrics that Chaos has already defined that can be customized to the different contexts. For example, like contribution from the universities, like if we have a contributor metric, we can implement it to the university area, okay? Like what are the uh, contributions coming from the universities in the open source space? Uh, number of contributors coming from the university side of it. And similarly, one-time contributors or like new contributors from the university. These are the existing metrics that we can even uh, uh, change the context and apply it to the open uh, university side of uh, things. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Um, you know, I think to build on what Stephanie just said, I, yesterday I met uh, with a group in the School of Engineering at Carnegie Mellon called the Research Accelerator Team, talk about open source and the OSPO. Um, and they said, you know, exactly what she was saying, that we have lots of proposals going through. We don't even know um, how many of them are, are using open source and producing open source and so on. How many of them are just putting code out on GitHub without a license? You know, all those kinds of things. Um, so one theme that given the last set of comments is how many of the metrics map, 
but then how many challenges are there in the university context to actually try and identify, to measure those metrics, right? Um, right. So that, that'll that be a theme I think we'll want to keep in mind. Um, you know, producing metrics is necessary, but it's not it's not always going to be sufficient in the university context. We'll have to sort of like number of contributors. So is that the students, the faculty, is that staff? Um, you know, what are the types of contributions in a university setting that can be very different? Uh, right. Those kinds of things. So we'll, we'll want to keep that in mind too. Um, I, I think, you know, what in my ideal world, um, how do we convince the folks that Stephanie was talking about? So every principal investigator at university, when they submit a proposal, there's tons of documents that you have to look at and check box and so on. Um, there isn't a question about, are you consuming or producing open source? So is there a way we can think about trying to get that into that set of checks that you have to, to, to sign off on before you submit a proposal? Right, and I like our pushback has been um, yeah. And sorry, I just like for some reason my internet's acting up, so I that's why I took my my video off just to make it a little easier. Um, uh, yeah, and the, what we we've talked to, talked to them about some of our intake for whether we can use it in our intake forums and add it. And there's there is a lot of a little bit of pushback about adding too much. And a lot of it has to do with I actually thought it was interesting that um, one of our our colleagues at the Office of Research was like, they, because there's a little bit of pushback, I think I talked about this in another meeting, I don't think it was this one, on the idea of require the requirements for open source that's coming out of uh, the, US, like, just the requirements in general, having these, like, you know, un unfunded mandate feelings um, that they don't necessarily want to be too obvious about tracking that. It's, a, it's kind of weird. That, I mean, I, I think that's just a hurdle we have to get over, like in within our case. I'm not sure if other universities are seeing that as well. But um, what they suggested was us is to create kind of that, that kind of a post funding um, search uh, mechanisms through our the the system, the Caillou system that we have would be the better way. But I'm sure each university could have something where like there, I would be great if people if there was openness to just having it on whatever your version of the intake form is where it says is this going to be open sourced or not you know or is there a requirement to open source or not um and then just check that box and that makes life so much easier so but uh we haven't quite gotten there yet so so yeah it, and I, oh, go ahead say go ahead no go ahead Elizabeth. i was just gonna say so would it be fair to maybe add um like developing some sort of checklist for universities on when how um to open source something is that what i'm hearing that you know maybe just some guidance around that like how does a university decide if they should open source what are the checks that they have you know you have to go through licensing like all of this stuff or, is, yeah. or is that, does that already exist uh to just it'll vary uh it, you know depending on universities to some degree um again i think tech transfer offices have some evidence of of, of doing that okay um you know, I think it's more, this may sound really odd to people not in universities, it's, it's, it's even more foundational that it's just disclosing that you are actually producing something open source. We, we actually have a hard time doing that um, in the university context. So uh, that's, that's the, the goal is to help people sort of identify that they're going to end up producing something open source. And I know I keep mentioning the complexities of all this. Um, so apologies for that, but it, it also varies. We're talking about faculty submitting proposals. Uh, it'll be different for students, right? It'll be different for students in classes. It'll be different for students on their own time. Um, I, I, I'm fairly sure, you know, the vast majority I'll say of universities in the US don't make IP claims on student work, right? Whatever they produce is, is their stuff. Um, so we'll wanna think about the different types of roles within a university as well. I don't want this to become this massive multi-dimensional problem, but um, it will be important to, to try and think about the different roles in some ways. Claire, with your question, is that in advance how to mention? measure intent yeah. Can you say I kind of I kind of got the idea that if we were thinking about what we measure that there seems to be a difference between measuring an intent to open source like a disclosure that I'm a, that I'm going that I'm thinking about doing something in open source that's actually mm -hmm. different I hadn't thought of it like that but it's actually different from I've actually put something into the open source ecosystem mm -hmm. like there's something on github which is a two different things like there, yep. there's yeah 
yeah, I, I hadn't grokked that that would be a distinction before, but yeah, it's just wanted to call that. Out. Yeah, um, they are different, right? So a, a PI yeah. could say, I have an intention of releasing things open source, and then later may decide, no, I, I, I don't want to do that. And for very good reasons. Um, and there can be the opposite case where you don't say it, but then at the end of it, you decide, sure, I'm, I'm going to put it out on GitHub and the license, even though I hadn't said so. And I, I would like to, I would like to point out that in, in this conversation, we're talking about, we're talking very specifically about just the license and not about kind of running the project in an open source collaborative way. Right. Th those are two different things and those yes. would look, look very different as well. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you're absolutely right. I've added even a third perspective, developing through open source community. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you can you can start to see why universities are such fun places. <laughs> Okay, and then um, the third kind of theme that came up last time was um, the desire to build bridges with libraries and librarians and also bring open science folks more into the conversations. And I didn't know if that was something that this group wanted to deliberately um, focus on or if that was just kind of like a wish list, you know, like, hey, wouldn't it be great if kind of a thing. So I, I added it here just for conversation. Um, see what y'all thought about adding that into like the kind of more formalizing it into the goals of this group or just having it be a, a thing that would be great. I like it. I mean, I like it in there um, to be kind of because it helps with roadmap, like for new people or, that are new or universities or groups coming into this that are new to see the all the stakeholders that have generally be involved. I know from from our perspective, Especially now that we're bridging out to the you know wider UC community, not just our you know not just UCSC, but also all the other UCs, um, that this connection is has we've seen it is even more important for us to now be seeing it on, in the other campuses. So I think it was something that definitely needs to. I, I, I think front and center the having these the bridges and the, the and identifying stakeholders like that. Um, are is actually super I think super uh, important for an OSPO setup like OSPO plus you know OSPO in academia but also just generally you know any open source efforts within within the university yeah there's a group I just put the link in the chat um, that we may want to reach out to called Helios um, is actually looking at things like um, you know promotion and tenure Right, guidelines, criteria, so on. Uh, it, it's US based, but it's multiple, it's over 90 institutions, I think, at this point. Um, so that might be a group we, we might want to reach out to. And I, I, I know a few of the people that are leading that effort. So we can keep that in mind. And the, the Helios group does have different roles from universities. Um, so including libraries, but also research administration, um, you know, administrators, uh, research computing, so on. Saeed, can I put that as an action item for you to reach out to them? Do you want to do sure. you want to solidify it that way? Okay. I, All right. I can do that. This <laughs> right. is, there you go. This is the first thing I'm doing. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> my favorite things especially if it, i'm not the one who has to do them <laughs> okay all right um so what so uh okay so where do we want to go from here i guess is my question to the group do we want to try to start a roadmap on doing this research since we figured that that would be a good place to kind of start and, and get organized um what do you what do you all think I, I, that makes sense to me. Um, I think, you know, again, one thing that Stephanie and I will try to be a little more clear about in the in the charge and scope and so on is how much are members of this group going to be doing that work uh, versus how much we try to reach out to others we know 
you know, who, who, who may actually be better suited to do that kind of work. Um, so that's one thing I think we we'll want to keep in mind. But these seem like good next steps to me, certainly. I think that's a really great point. Um, because obviously everybody's busy. Um, <laughs> so we don't want to, you know, add to your all's burdens of work. Um, so yeah, at any time, if any of these become um, you know, too much, then we're, yeah, obviously we're, we'll see what who else is doing this work already, I think. Um, and maybe it's just an informal kind of thing, like it maybe it just doesn't have to be a big, you know, a big deal, but just some a, a place to move us off zero, really. And that's how we work at chaos is like, let's just try to move off zero, and then see where it takes us from there. Um, shipping to learn. I, I heard that phrase, and I really like it. Um, so I'm gonna use that more. Um, do we, I mean, we have, we have 20 minutes left. So, um, what, what do we want to, what do we want to do next? Where do we want the discussion to go? Uh, can I, can I comment about the, the last thing we were talking about real quick? So from a, from a chaos perspective, uh, the way we've set up these, uh, this context group is that, uh, chaos wants to kind of support and help out as much as possible. So there, if, if there's there's work in this group that you'd like to have done, for example, defining metrics or creating metrics models, uh, we can reach out to other chaos working groups and, and request that being done uh, specifically around those two things that, that I asked, but there, but there may be the possibility to uh, uh, request assistance in other ways as well. So if you if there is a, a metric that you've identified that that you need to have defined or we want to have defined or we want to understand how it maps to other metrics that that is something we could for example we could reach out to the the chaos common working group and and ask them to uh uh provide some information on that or define a metric for us or so if that's helpful yeah no that's definitely helpful um, and that's actually especially helpful to me because I don't actually know a lot of the way chaos does its work. So the more you can share that, that'd be great. Um, I think Jen, you have your hand up, is that right? Yeah, I, I, along those lines, I was just wondering how, if there's information out there about how you might structure conversations that are maybe like within your own open source community. So I have an event coming up in August for um, this big, uh, library open source project. And I, I proposed a session on metrics because I was like, well, I started doing this and, and my proposal was very informal. Just, you know, I said, I talk about what I've learned from these groups and we would talk about things we might be interested in measuring, but I'm wondering if there are any resources that are available from chaos when people have events like that, like where they might have that kind of discussion. I would say yes, but I would let maybe Elizabeth would uh, can elaborate more on that. I know we have slides. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. I was just going to say, so um, I guess it depends on what kinds of things you're looking to measure. Like we have a ton. If you're looking to measure things about events, then yes, we have tons of those. Um, but if you're looking uh, for things around your open source community, we also have tons of those. So what I'm not really sure. Give me more context, Jen, about what your what your talk is who like who the audience is and like what your goals are in the talk. Um, so I'm part of the governance for this project called Folio, which is open source software that libraries use to run libraries, like lend books and things. Um, and we're having a lot of growing pains, and it seems like metrics to measure things going on in the community would be helpful. But, you know, we were talking before about like, is anything being measured? <laughs> and I think that's kind of where we are. Like we kind of, there's like some knowledge of issues, but it would also be interesting to like actually measure some, some things that are going on. So it's more for like a community that's trying to do some introspection um, and think about what's happening. It's also of course a group that would like funding. <laughs> So, um, so it's essentially kind of like going to people who maybe haven't thought about this before or have thought about it, but were overwhelmed and like trying to be like, okay, if we were going to get a little subgroup together to start looking at what we want to measure, what would we do? So it's really starting at the 
beginning, I guess. So yeah, so I could, yeah, I could just like talk them through this and then, um, and this, then I guess. Yeah, yeah, this sounds perfect for what you're looking for. Okay. And here's the link to that. Um, so have a read through this. We, and then we also have a metrics model working group itself. Um, and I know they're working on one for funding, but it it's, you know, so highly contextual based on what the project is and who's funding and all of that. So um, I know that's kind of in the works, at least in discussion, but here is this, I'll just drop it here in the chat. There's that model starter, just very can, super basic. Can I suggest, can I suggest, because I'm just after looking at the the metrics, like the contributor one, the metric model that um uh, that that was the Kevin shared, um, and I, I I'm I'm assuming that the the fully defined metric from chaos took a bit of time to get to that fully defined metric. So what would be really helpful actually, rather than like the detailed metric models, because these these themselves can be a bit overwhelming for people who haven't even thought about this before. But even if there was like, say five questions, you haven't thought about metrics, but you have five questions that you might ask someone when when you're thinking about what do you measure today? Like something like that might be, be very useful. Like I'm thinking now to go back to the Trinity folk because I know that they have, they, they've been doing some measurement around something around this. But I don't really know what to ask them. Like, what do you measure? Like, that might be a bit too broad. So, if there were maybe five questions, I could say, "Can you write a sentence or two on these five questions?" <laughs> they, they they might actually give us something that would be a starting point for a, a, an exploration around a, a, a particular metric definition. So, I don't know if that's available. Like, a, because when I'm looking at the at the full length of the of the definition of contributors, there's so much information in there that if I showed someone that as a sample, they'll get scared. They'll go like, "Oh my God, she wants me to write an essay on this." Whereas really, I just want to do a starter for 10. Here, here's, here's, write five sentences for me. <laughs> yeah, maybe another, uh, Claire, tell me if this is wrong, but I, you know, what I'm hearing, and when you say that, um, and, and actually chaos folks, tell me if I'm getting it wrong in terms of what chaos has done, um, but it, it, it feels to me like the chaos metrics um have been really useful and helpful thinking about projects and communities working on particular open source and what we're trying to think about perhaps in this working group is university right is is not is not a project it's lots of projects lots and lots of projects and yeah it's a community but <laughs> it's not it's lots of different communities too um so you know, if, if one's looking at a particular open source project or a particular community working on a project, then I think the metrics sort of seamlessly, you know, fit in that way. But if you're looking at people who are just very, very complex environments where there's multiple projects, multiple communities, multiple stakeholders, we may have a little bit of, you know, some bridging to do uh, through, through this group. Uh, so I, uh, sorry, I'm not interrupting anyone, am I? You're not interrupting me no. suddenly. <laughs> uh, so I, th I think you're you're uh, you're on target with that statement. So a lot of the a lot of the metrics that we that we have uh, defined in the past, and a lot of our work is is kind of focused on that project perspective. Uh, so the uh, and and in open source, really, there there are the kind of those those different perspectives, right? So the the, the organizational perspective uh, versus the the project perspective when we when we talk about you know organizations and and colleges kind of engaging in open source so the uh the this working group and the uh the ospo working group that we have are are both kind of the the goal for those two groups are are to really explore that organizational perspective and it's a, it's an area that we are weaker in uh for sure uh however we we are aware of the distinction and and we have tried to do some work uh, in the past, uh, taking those perspectives, that's we, we actually used to have a working group called the value working group, uh, where we were looking at uh, kind of usage metrics and some of the popularity metrics and what they might mean to uh, to organizations. Uh, I will say the uh, the work in that organizational space is is it's a little harder, right? Because there are, there are a bunch of different perspectives and. Uh, uh, it's not as it's not as easy to uh, define metrics and models in that space, which is which is why we're very very happy to have you all here. Uh, from Said's conversation, I was feeling like uh, it's uh, 
the pain point is looking at from the ecosystem perspective, like in the ecosystem lens, how the university is behaving, like different departments, different uh, PIs going for the funding, different. So there are different angles that we can take as an ecosystem lens that what is the entirety of the ecosystem from a university in terms of applying funding, in terms of contributing to open source project, in terms of releasing the open source artifact and things like these. If, if, I, if I can add in, sorry, just to, sure. to add to that, because I, I completely um, agree with the, with the points that were made about the ecosystem and the the lens and everything like that and i suppose just to clarify my ask it's slightly different so 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 i suppose my very particular ask was was to see if there might be prompting questions to help people for us for and i was hoping that this may also help jen but i was thinking about using it myself for me to go to someone else who i know in an in an in Trek transfer office in trinity college dublin to kind of say look you know i know you're measuring something you know can you consider these five questions like you know what are you measuring why are you measuring it how are you measuring it i i'm, I'm looking down through the definition of the metrics and and so I, so i'm hearing this conversation and i think um it's like it's incredibly really valuable to to also capture then perhaps some additional questions that you might ask when you're considering like think about things and you know that you might like to measure uh, but 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 i just want to clarify that my particular ask would be five questions to get us to what are you measuring today <laughs> um and i think maybe both might be really useful because one would i think one set of questions might um prompt a, a good discussion around what is needed but but just to be very clear what i would hope for is a set of questions that would allow for someone to very quickly jot down some points that would maybe be a starter for a very particular metric definition which may be two separate goals uh, to so, add to that point i would say uh, maybe then we can come up here with a kind of a context like okay for example if you're going to someone for asking those questions what is the context that you are trying to measure maybe bringing that clarity, like as Sai mentioned in, uh, in university side, there are so many different areas, like funding is one area, contribution is one area, artifact contribution is another area. So maybe coming up with a scenario that, okay, we want to assess something in this particular scenario or like maybe funding, then okay, what are those four or five questions that we can develop to ask those folks who are interested in that particular re, uh, space that we are going to. Then we can come up with a difference. So for example, in the model group, we see very simple metric model, like four metrics. Okay, what is the new contributor? Like, you know, two or three questions that can help us address. So maybe coming up with those scenarios like, uh, or uh, areas that focuses, like context that focuses that then it will help us to come up with the matrix of questions around that area. So when we, uh, when we first started uh, uh, defining metrics, we used to go to uh, conferences and we would do this activity uh, based on a, based on a, a Basili paper, uh, with uh, basically we use we use a uh, the the goal question metric paradigm right so we so in the uh, uh, in that event we would ask the uh, we would split up into kind of small groups and we would ask uh, what goals what are the goals that your your organization or your group or your your community has uh, and then from the from those goals we would ask. Uh, you know what questions can we answer about those goals, uh, and then from there we we would next move into you know what metrics can help us answer those questions, right? So the the goal question metric paradigm is 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 what we uh, is a tool that we we use we actually used a lot in the beginning, uh, and we still use it I think when we when we define metrics. That's really helpful to know and hear. Um, and I think, Claire, someone suggested that at the workshop in Brussels. I could be wrong about that. It's the process we used in the metrics. So, yeah. so, so okay. the guide that Elizabeth linked to there um, 
uh, that's the summary of that. But if you look at the raw notes, you'll see that we literally went right. through a cycle of saying, what are our goals? What are the questions we would ask? And what are the metrics that might solve for the solution for that? So, um, so yeah, so, so there you go, goals, questions, metrics. <laughs> so, but, but in the raw notes, it actually goes into a lot of like detail there. So this is, this is an attempt at summarizing that, but, but it may be interesting for folks who, want to look into it a little. We may revisit the raw notes is my point, um, thinking about those particular, any particular one to, to, to look for the explicit expression of the goal question and the metric, which is probably captured here yeah. in this. Yeah, and 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 uh, again, to that fun characteristic of universities, right? So you ask, what are the goals? Lots of people will have different goals. Um, also, you will have people with the same goal that have different questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it it's a really good framework, mm -hmm. and I think it might help tease out some of the complexities, but also some of the connection points, right? Is if, if people may say, I have nothing to do with this, but if they're all focused on the same goal, we can say from the perspective of what we're asking of you, you actually do. You know, your goal is to submit a grant. You, you're in the research administration office. You're a faculty member. You know, you're 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 part of the uh, IT group. You all think, no, no, we have nothing to do with. No, you're all focused on getting a grant done. So that's the goal. And in that framework of that being the goal, what are some questions we can ask you? What are some metrics we can look at? Um, and, and and so on. So I think it'll be really good to keep that in mind throughout this process. So Claire, to your original question, it seems like you are wanting to ask your folks what they're measuring because you know they're doing stuff and you just want to get more details about that so it's almost like you could take this in reverse to say okay what metrics uh are you using right now and what questions are you trying to answer with those metrics and maybe what goals were you trying to solve or what you know what's what was the reasoning behind that what what was your goal what's your goal yeah. for success something like that yeah no it's 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 reminded me to actually put 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 those three the goal the question metric i'd actually in my head been diving into like literally you know what do you use to measure that so like i I'd, I'd kind of been taking it down and i was only basing that on the on some of the details that i've seen and some of the um metric definition when when it gets into those individual metrics so yeah um, but 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 i really like that idea of getting them get getting having a, a consistent uh goal question metric framing at the beginning and then maybe to say okay so you've mentioned a metric what have you done to measure that or give us an example yeah yeah something like that show yeah. me your report i like i love i look by the way just from a value perspective like seeing the visualization of the output of these things it makes them real so it's it's really um i just want to give credit to chaos for for that like that sort of level of of um description really really helps rather than just a theoretical discussion about something so just seeing an actual report is really really helpful i'm just looking here at the example i picked up Nothing like a good visualization to get you excited. I Sometimes those are easier to provide than others. <laughs> I will say. Perhaps, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're almost out of time. Um, we have three minutes left. So is there anything we want to slide in at the last minute here? Okay, so it seems like Saeed, you're the only one that ended up with an action. <laughs> Congratulations. Fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll take an action, I had an action item Sorry. to actually meet. That would be fantastic. Yeah, Ste <laughs> Steph Stephanie will also have an action item. Right. <laughs> then I have to talk to Saeed. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, should I put that in here? I will actually put that yeah, in there. Yeah, no, it'd be good to put it in there. Yeah, there you go. Right. Elizabeth, can we, can we share a link to the. Uh, the slide decks that we have or the the folder that has the the chaos slide deck yes i will have to find that i don't have that off the top of my head but i will find it and i will drop that in there for you jen if you would like to use it and i'll take an action i'm go i'm going to go to the folks in the trinity thing and ask them some questions goal goal metric goal question metric questions and uh i'll see what they say is it prompt anything um, and, okay, so we're going to put that down here. And Claire, I mean, I'm sure it goes without saying, it'd be really useful to hear 
your experience and you know the the reaction from the folks you ask these questions yeah um and i'll put an action item here for me just as random oh colt not hold cool there we go thank you yeah you're welcome um jen are you you're in slack right can i slack them to you yeah yeah perfect i will do that we'll stick, stick them on the group yeah because yeah I, I was gonna say okay. if you don't mind but yeah put them in the group channel that'd be right shall do all right thanks everybody for being here thank you kind of short week appreciate you being here and we will see you here next time Great. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye. everybody bye Sorry, elizabeth just to confirm when is the next time <laughs> uh good question two. let me look two weeks it's, right it's, two is it every, it's every two weeks right two yeah. weeks yes That's so right. it will be the 14th of june perfect yep. thank you perfect. all right see you right, all bye bye, -bye.